Thank you for staying tuned. It's still Wake Up Nigeria. Uh, Damilola Orimogunje, that's our guest today. He started his writing career uh, with newspaper columns and journals. <laughs> yes, of course. And then he started working at R2 TV as a producer for two years and was a scriptwriter and editor on Africa Magic's My Flatmates and Hustle. Mm. He is currently working uh, on his uh, debut feature film, Dear Ajayi, and a couple of other uh, TV projects as well. He's joining us this morning. Uh, talk to us about what he's been up to and how's it going? <laughs> Very well. First thing I want to ask, and this is one writer to another because, you know, I write, I dabble a little bit. Okay. Um, your background, so you started as uh, writing as uh, newspaper columns. I studied mass communication. Right, okay. okay. So I, I majored in journalism, mm -hmm. print. So I'm um, given the background of writing, but basically for newspaper, but I now delved into writing screenplays. Yeah, okay, so, well, you know, usually, I mean, the the background, of course, yes. helped in then, yes, you know, providing direction definitely. for what you then eventually went into. Yes, definitely. Okay. The, the, my, basically, my background was I, I started off writing at a very early stage. Like, I, I, would, I was interested in writing anything. So um, it gave me the courage to want to study mass communication to further on it. Then, so basically, I've been writing all through the years, but different, um, um, just different units, like yeah. for print. Then later, it's I ended up actually write, learning how to write for, because they're all different, how right. to write for screenplays. Now, when you hear Damilola Orimo Gunja, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably someone in his 40s. Considering wow. how much you've achieved your experience, <laughs> uh, not. winning awards uh, for, your, for, for, for what you do is fantastic, especially considering how many other people are very experienced in that field. So let's start from the very beginning. How did you get into this in the first instance? Um, I think I started off as a like I started off as a writer. I, I was writing a um, couple of shows. Then I worked in Alta TV as a TV producer. Previous to then, I already worked at LTV8 as a as a producer or something like that. But after I worked as a TV producer, then um, I was writing series. I was writing some projects. Um, then I I made my first short film, which was called Family. Mm. Then um, after then, I followed up by making a film called Mo. Then after then, I, I keep Moon getting... Moon is quite popular. Yes, Moon, Mo, yeah. yeah, quite popular. Um, it was a short film as well. Yeah. So I made Mo, and then I made a couple of other films. Then I, I write basically for African Magic. I've done projects for Film One. So I... So was, um, people tell me that, like, you look quite young, like you expect to see someone older, <laughs> but I, I feel it's just God's grace and then just hard work. Like, just, it's just about the passion. Like, I'm passionate about filmmaking, so I put 24-7 energy into it. One of the things I've, I've wanted to know uh, is, you know, for a writer, especially writer and producer, especially when you begin to work on larger and larger projects, yes. um, it can get pretty daunting when you look at, mm -hmm. especially so you're working on a project like Hustle, for instance, yes. it's, it's massive, you know, um, all the people that have to be involved locally, internationally as well. How do you get a handle of everything that you have to do? from start to finish is this do you do it, manage it like a project like a proper project management um, yes yes case basically study? because currently i'm a freelance filmmaker so that means i have like four projects with four different brands at the same time mm -hmm. so most of time i do this time management thing where i know i'm writing also this week or i'm writing um this show this week or i'm doing my own personal project this month or something like that so i just do like a mini timetable where i organize myself and like also like you said they have different departments so i really don't have to think about the production part or the directing part because mine is just writing mm. and in a project in which i'm probably the producer and the director then i know how to think about the production the creative aspect and so that's crazy i mean that's it's huge. crazy yeah. yeah it is filmmaking is crazy now dami you tend to for your films, if one goes through everything, uh, you have four major focuses, as far as I'm concerned. It's either love, betrayal, depression, or death. Why is that? Uh, I think basically, I'm influenced by my upbringing. Like, I grew up seeing, realizing, seeing so many stories, like reading so many stories, seeing so many stories, and then they shaped me into the kind of stories I want to tell. I'm interested in social issues. Um, and basically, I want to tell relatable stories so that I've seen, I've heard, that people can relate to. So most time, I'm, I just remember one story of one woman from this, 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 and then I want to tell that kind of story. On, on the screen right now is one of your stories. What are you telling here? Yes, um, this is my latest project. It's called Losing My Religion. Um, it's, it's a film about religious fanaticism. 
Hmm. Um, you know, do, we all understand the fact that most African parents actually enforce religion on children, mm -hmm. even without the actual realization of what religion is about, without even knowing who Jesus is or knowing who, what this religion is about. But you just tell them, go to church, go do and do this. So this film is really about um, a father who enforced religion on his on son, his child. Okay. who hasn't actually realized um, what this really means. And then it, it went on the wrong path where um, the boy was being abused by the pastor. Wow. And then he couldn't say it to anyone because for so many, for some reasons. What, what was happening here? Um, this is actually a surreal scene where um, some mysterious beings are actually undressing the boy. This is actually like the first scene of the film. It's supposed to set the temple of um, the boy in a dilapidated building. Okay. And then it shows the kind of um, situation he is at that point. Mm -hmm. And then you have like two mysterious beings on white coming in to actually strip him off. Wow. In quote, it depends on subjective yeah, meaning. Let's take a look at another clip from uh, one of your other yeah. projects. Yes. Um, Tori te ba ni gba owo te je mi eni le ma san ah se gbo mi bayi that's a case of blackmail or trade by butter as well but yeah. blackmail the focus on prostitution obviously which is the bigger issue that you were trying yes, to address definitely. Mm. right definitely so what, what what exactly are you trying to address with this one um with this is um firstly the issue of prostitution because we have um, definitely we have madams in the yeah. in society who just pick up random girls and then give them promises them better life mm -hmm. and then brings them into the house and then turns them into something else mm -hmm. and now this is a, even an issue of the immediate family like going to the aunt to actually take the daughter the daughter the aunt realizes that um, knows that the this is, this what is prostitution you do. but she can't that, that's the issue of blackmail like okay all the money you made then you have to pay it up mm -hmm. then she has no choice so she has to give out the child and so the film essentially is about putting the girl into this dilemma and then the girl trying to find a way out mm -hmm. and oh the girl is now the one trying to because trying to, from what we yes. could see from that clip it was the mom that was that more was, or less trying so as yeah, what she, she, she gets into the house oh the girl got, goes yeah she got into the oh, house she okay. got into, introduced to prostitution and then the entire thing was she actually trying to get freedom wow amazing i mean wow. uh, some, some of the issues that you address are actually societal issues and exactly. things that people that we need to and, see and, and to about. think that what she said she needed was someone to help her with chores including yes. cooking you cook right <laughs> i do you cook i do yes so okay. we're going to be taking you to the kitchen now <laughs> you won't be uh, the one doing the cooking though oh okay that's nice <laughs> to eat us. right yes <laughs> i'm interested to join us in the kitchen <laughs> all right after you. Okay, welcome to the kitchen. Oh my goodness. This is what you guys prepared for breakfast? Yeah. Very okay, nice. so yeah, I had a taste of the pando potatoes. It is extremely light. It is so light. Oh, Trust this is pando potato. Yeah, so it doesn't feel like you're having is it, This is at sweet all. potato. Yes. Chef for me, this yeah. is beautiful. Yes. This is really, really amazing. So, of course, here with us is um, Amaka. She performed earlier on yes. on the show, guys. Hi, Amaka. How's it going? Very show. nice show. person. Thank, Thank, Thank you so much. Mike, Mike, Mike that, that thing should be staying. I like what you do with the guitar. Stay, how long did it take you to learn how to, mm. how to play? How long? I've been playing since I was a teenager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And funny enough, I learned by myself. You learned wow, by you yourself? Wow, you learned yourself, wow. I learned myself. It's a process, though. Mm. So you can't say I've stopped learning. You keep learning. You keep learning. Every day, oh, exactly. Let's do less talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So dig into it. Thank you. you. as well, Shaka. Me has Pound made this for you. Pound of potato. Pound of potato. Have you trademarked this thing? Or it's already out there? <laughs> All the people are doing it. Yeah. yeah. But it's not... Common. Yes, it's not common. Not as common as the yam, mm. the pounder yeah, yam and all. At all. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is not. The lady is yet to get the vegetables. Yet to get the <laughs> you know, guys are always fast yeah, when it comes sorry. to food. Let us know what you think. What do you think? <laughs> like yeah, it? Know that no, we check. don't know. I might don't take home to mama. I want to, I want to check. Definitely. I might take home to mama. Yes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of vegetables. Vegetables. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I like it's very soft. I like very it. Soft. Very soft. I think it's peppery. Yes. I mean, rubber, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I like All it. Right, I've never America. taken this before. Oh, really? Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Found the okay. potato. I only yes, found the potato, yeah. I only know about yam, yeah. yeah. but I don't know about potato. Mm. I'm definitely going to go look for that. Well, nice so, how do you, 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 you mash the potatoes? No, or? it's a flakes. 
Okay. Oh, there's okay. No, it's yeah. processed already. It's, it's processed. already processed. Yeah, so all so you do is make it like semo or panuya. Oh, or 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 but or once the water is boiled, just bring it off the fire and just turn. Mm -hmm. Pour the flakes in. Okay. Be careful. It comes though. out. Uh, potato oh, is very filling. So I'm even wondering. You'll be that, you'll funny finish thing. That? It doesn't. It's actually Irish potatoes. It's, it's, it's very it's light. Irish? It's very light. Yes. It's Irish. Very light. That was why I asked earlier. Is it Irish? You can see I'm quiet. I'm just wondering what you're doing. All right, people, uh, big thank you to our friends over at Homely Engine for uh, the kitchen accessories on the show. Thank you.